Hi there, this is Chris, the chap in the cap from Moto Legends. Today I'm going to talk to you about layering, about base layers and about mid layers. And I'm going to do so because it's a very important category, but I think it's one of the least understood areas of motorcycle clothing. And there are many bikers out there who think that it's just not important to them, that really layering is only important if you're doing huge mileages, if you're going to be riding in extreme hot conditions or extreme cold conditions, but that's not the case. Modern technical gear, and when I say modern technical gear, I'm talking about motorcycle clothing with a membrane. Modern technical gear only works properly, only does the job that it's meant to do if you're wearing the correct base layers beneath it. Now, we have a lot of people come to the shop here. They will spend a thousand pounds, 1500 pounds, sometimes 2000 pounds on a new suit because they've read rave reviews. They think this is, this is the suit that's going to help them stay dry when it's wet. It's going to keep them warm when the temperatures have dropped and it's got to keep them cool when it's really hot. But the fact is, if they go out and wear that gear with the wrong base layers, they've kind of wasted their money because they've spent all that money, they've got a stonking suit and then they are stopping it, they are preventing that suit from doing the job that it was intended to do. So what I'm going to do initially, I'm going to go and talk about membranes and I'm going to talk about the importance of breathability and why that's crucial to getting the most out of your motorcycle gear. So, base layers and mid layers have different features, different attributes, but in the context of technical motorcycle wear, and that's what we're talking about here today, breathability sits at the heart of all layers. And that's important because a motorcycle garment, a technical motorcycle garment, does its job, does its job as well as it does because it has a membrane. So we need to understand what a membrane is and how it does its job. So, Every waterproof jacket has a membrane. Obviously, if it's got a coating, that's different. We're not talking about that here. But a more technical motorcycle jacket will have a membrane. Now, if it's a bonded membrane, if it's a laminated membrane, it'll be stuck to the inside of the outer fabric. If it's a drop liner, it will just suspend there. But the membrane is, in essence, the same kind of membrane. It's a very thin sheet. You can liken it to a polythene sheet. It's got millions and millions of little holes in it. Um, the way a membrane works is that it allows the hot, moist air to pass from one side to the colder side. The holes are so small that the rain droplets cannot pass through from the outside, but your sweat, as it becomes vapour, can pass through the holes to escape that keeps you feeling dry on the inside. That's basically what a membrane does, that's how it works, but it cannot do its job if the layers that sit between the membrane and the body are blocking the movement of that moist air. So the base and mid layers that sit beneath the membrane have to be highly breathable. Now, the mistake that a lot of motorcyclists make is to wear cotton layers beneath their motorcycle jacket. And we've all got cotton t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts. It's a very easy item to grab out of the cupboard and put that on underneath your motorcycle jacket. We see the mistake made particularly by commuters who want to wear a polo shirt or a, a button shirt when they get into work because they don't have facilities to change. So it makes sense for them or they feel it makes sense for them to wear cotton. It's much more convenient. Now, on a really short journey, cotton is not a problem. In fact, on its own in a dry state, it is reasonably breathable. But over time, in fact, all the time, we are sweating. And the longer your journey, the more extreme the conditions, the more you are going to sweat. And what happens with cotton? Cotton is comprised of long yarn fibres, and you can liken a cotton fibre to a crushed straw. When it receives moisture, it expands and just holds onto that water, so it absorbs moisture. And when a cotton fibre is wet, it won't wick that moisture away, and it won't allow any breathing to pass through it. Now, we've all experienced, I'm sure, playing football or some other sport with a cotton t-shirt on. We've seen those wet patches under the arms, sometimes all over the body. Now, when we do that in the context of a motorcycle garment, when you're wearing a layer that is soaking wet with water, we cannot sweat. And that's important, it's vitally important, because sweating is the body's natural way of cooling down. So, what happens when we sweat? 
moisture comes out of the skin. Now, that moisture then turns into vapour and passes away from the body. When moisture turns into vapour, that requires energy. And that energy is developed, that takes heat, and that pulls heat out of the skin, and it is that that cools the body down. So it's the transition from water, a water state to a gas state, energy and heat, that cools you down. But if you're wearing a layer underneath your membrane that doesn't allow that to happen, that doesn't allow breathing, you cannot cool down. So that's vitally important. A wet garment is just gonna keep you on a hot day, it's just gonna keep you feeling hot and hotter and hotter. There's another issue though, towards the end of the day, let's say you've been riding all day, you've got very hot, you've got this wet cotton t-shirt on. The temperature drops maybe as you start riding into the early evening or late evening. We then have another process that is in essence the same, evaporative cooling is going to take place. Now, remember at this stage, you're cold, it's even colder outside. So there's still this process of the water being wicked away for, or taken away from the body as the, as the wetness is turned into a vapor to escape. That's gonna cool the body down even more at a time when you're already feeling really cold and that's just not nice. So when it's cold at night, again, you want, you want to be able to have your moisture, your sweat escape the, the body. But if it's gonna stay there and make you cold, the evaporative cooling is gonna make your skin even colder. You're gonna end up feeling very wet. You're gonna end up feeling a bit clammy and you're gonna end up feeling very cold. Now in Scandinavia, they call cotton killer cotton. And you can imagine out there, if you're out on a snowmobile machine all day, you've been working hard all day, you can develop a lot of sweat. If you've got a cotton layer on, that becomes absolutely caked with moisture. But when the temperature drops, let's say you get caught out, you end up riding home, minus three, minus four, minus five, whatever, then all that moisture inside the garment can actually freeze and it can kill you. In extreme conditions, if you get stuck out overnight and you've got a jacket that's got all this moisture inside, as that freezes, it can kill you. So I'm not suggesting that's gonna to happen to most of us, that's an extreme condition, but it illustrates the point that we need our base layers to breathe. We need it to breathe, we need our base layers to breathe so that we can cool down but also when it's cold, so that we don't have this, this buildup of moisture that's gonna make us feel even colder. Let's go on now, I'm gonna talk about the initial layer, the actual base layer. Okay. So this is a typical base layer combination, configured here as a separately worn top and bottom. A base layer is defined as the garment that you wear next to the skin. It is called a base layer because it forms the base of a layering system. Now, a base layer is there to enable moisture to be wicked away from the body. That's its primary objective. It's got to be made of a material that does not absorb moisture, and it's got to be made from a material that doesn't, or sorry, that does dry out quickly. In the summertime, of course, you might only be wearing a base layer. If it's hot, you're not going to want a mid layer. And even though we're talking today about technical garments, we're talking more about technical garments with membranes, even if you were wearing a mesh jacket, you would benefit from having this on as a base layer because again, it's going to draw moisture away from the body and allow it to evaporate into the air. There's another benefit to a good base layer and it's that it can prevent the kind of stickiness and chafing you get in really hot conditions. So if you've got a heavy jacket on and it gets wet and moist underneath, the kind of rubbing against the skin can be very uncomfortable. Now we find this most commonly with a very popular gene that we sell, it's the Roca Revolution gene. It's a laminated waterproof gene and it has the membrane obviously laminated to the inside. The problem is that when it gets really hot, once you get up into temperatures like the 30s, your skin is sweating, it's right up against the membrane and it can become a little bit uncomfortable. It certainly starts to stick and there comes a point where these jeans are not as nice to wear. But what we found is that when you wear a proper base layer, a base layer like this underneath them, it becomes much more comfortable and it actually raises the temperature which jeans like this can be worn comfortably. So other than the role of causing moisture to escape from the body, there is a kind of comfort factor with a good base layer. Now this set from Helvarsons is pretty much on the money. It's made from polyester. Polyester has the qualities that I was talking about. It does not absorb water, it dries fast. This one is made of a pretty broad mesh. It's not the most high-tech of 
base layers, but it does the job. And for most of us, this is going to be more than fine. Costs are, I mean, they are incredibly reasonable. The top is 30 pounds, the bottom is 30 pounds. You can pay more than that. You can pay a lot more than that. Klim does a range called the Aggressor, the Aggressor Cool range of base layers. They are more technical than this. And if you are riding in extreme conditions, if you are really working hard off-road for long periods, if you're riding in really hot and dry conditions, you might benefit from something that is better than this. But if you're not wearing a base layer at all at present or wearing an incorrect base layer, the biggest change you can make to the comfort of your riding is to wear a base layer. And this is perfectly up to that job. Importantly, what a base layer like this does, it sets up so that the mid layer, the next layer we're going to talk about, can do its job properly. So let's go on now, let's talk about mid layers. So this is a classic mid layer, again, on this occasion from our friends at Halvarsons, shown here as a top and bottom set, so they can be worn separately. Now, it's a merino base layer combination, and we love merino wool. It is an absolutely amazing fabric that does almost everything. It'll help keep you warm, it'll wick moisture away, and it will help you cool down. Merino sheep obviously create the wool that is, is used in a garment like this, and merino sheep create the finest and softest wool of just about any sheep. It's what enables the hardy merino sheep to survive in temperatures from plus 30 right down to minus 10 degrees. The strands, the fibers in merino wool are incredibly fine. They're half the thickness of a normal wool fiber and they're a quarter the thickness of a human hair. It's so thin that it molds comfortably to the body. It doesn't itch in the way that normal wool does. Now you can get different weights of merino. We kind of prefer still to use a polyester base layer. You can get lightweight base layers in merino that obviously you can wear instead of polyester, but we prefer to have a slightly heavier weight of merino as a mid layer and then a polyester base layer. Now, it's the finest of the fibers that help merino to be so effective at wicking moisture from the body. The first thing that's got to be said is that it does not, or the fibers of merino do not absorb moisture in the way that say cotton fibers do. It's just a different kind of fiber, but it's a capillary action within the strands of merino wool that help it drag water from the body to the surface. Now, a capillary action is a propensity to wat for water to move through spaces in a strand. It relies on a number of forces, forces like osmosis, but basically because merino wool is so fine and there are so many air gaps between it, it wicks moisture far better than a normal wool. And obviously if it's wicking moisture, what happens, it moves from the base layer out to the surface. And once it's on the surface, it can then evaporate. That is, one of, that is what is gonna keep you cool. That is why even a fairly thick weight of merino wool will help you stay cool. Now, merino is also good for warmth. And again, that's down to the fineness of the fibers. And it works again on a number of, le of levels. There are air pockets, more air pockets in merino than there are in other walls. So where there is heat, it holds on to that heat because the, those little gaps just hold on to it. There's also a natural crimp, as it's called, in the merino fiber that also holds on to the heat. Finally, there's a process that's called sorption. Now, sorption operates on a molecular level and it's, and we've discussed this before in the context of evaporation and sweating. But when moisture leaves the body, it becomes a gas, and then it has to become a moisture again as it's wicked through the merino fiber. When you go from that gaseous state to a liquid state, that creates heat again. And that heat is held in the material again in those gaps. So merino sorbs heat and holds on to heat again better than a normal fiber or a normal wool fiber. And finally, because it is so fine, merino wool tends to be woven more tightly. And that is what makes it, in addition, a great insulator. So a merino top of a certain thickness is going to be far warmer than a normal wool jumper of a much greater thickness. It works incredibly well as an insulator. There is a third quality to merino that makes it so effective. 
and it's that it doesn't hold on to smell. Bacteria is drawn to moisture. So when we sweat, that moisture is absorbed to a lesser or greater degree into the material that we're wearing. Now, bacteria love that moisture. Sweat itself does not smell, but the bacteria are drawn to the salts and the fatty acids in our sweat. And it's when the bacteria, I know it sounds disgusting, but it's when the bacteria excrete, that's what causes the smell. Now, because merino wool wicks the moisture far faster than normal fabrics do, that's why it does not smell to anywhere near the same degree. There's another element to this, which is that the fibres in, the woolen fibres in merino wool have a scale on them. And ironically, one would think it was the opposite, but bacteria likes to cling to smooth surfaces, not to scaly surfaces. So bacteria is not drawn to the fibres in merino wool in the way it is with other wools. So that's the third and final quality. It's amazing. You can wear merino wool for days and days on end, even weeks on end. So if you're going somewhere and you're short on space, you have to wear merino. You can honestly wear it for several weeks, take it out, and it just doesn't smell. So merino does everything. It keeps you warm, it wicks moisture, therefore it keeps you cool, and it doesn't smell. It is an amazing fabric. Now this one, from Halvarsons. It's a fairly heavy weight, as I've mentioned. It's more a winter weight. So this is, if we were to create a layering system, we would definitely go with their base layer, their polyester base layer for the summer, for hot days. And then when it's a wee bit cooler, we'd have this over the top. For us, that's almost the perfect combination. I'm gonna come back on it in a minute. I'm gonna talk about another possibility because Halvarsons has a set of base come mid layers that sit in between these two so that's also a way of, of doing it but we think these are fantastic the top is priced at 99 pounds the bottom at 89 pounds that's pretty good value it's not inexpensive but if you were to get a similar weight a similar quality from someone like icebreaker you would certainly be paying more so today we have talked about base layers and mid layers in some detail i would suggest now in both instances i have referenced layers from the Swedish brand Helvarsons, and that's because I think they produce great gear, it's top quality, it does what it says on the tin, and I think it's very reasonably priced. Now, in principle, we still prefer the solution that we have been discussing, which is a polyester base layer over a slightly thicker merino wool. And what that means is you've got every condition covered from the heat of the desert to the coldest day in the middle of winter. This range from Helvarsons is called the light wool range and it's designed to sit in the middle it kind of does a little bit of everything it is still a merino wool but it's super soft it's like cotton so it's designed to be worn next to the skin i think because of that it was it would never be necessary i can't see the benefit of, in wearing a polyester base beneath this because this is not much thicker than the polyester anyway and it's going to wick moisture almost as well i think it would also be over the top to wear this beneath a thicker merino. Again, no reason why you couldn't, but I just don't believe that that would be the best solution. I don't think it would be necessary. What this is, is a set of underwear, as it were, that is designed for simplicity. It's designed to be the one set that pretty much does everything. Okay, it may not be quite so good as the two-part system when it's really, really cold or really, really warm, but across the temperatures that we get most of the time here in the UK, it's gonna be pretty perfect. And it's gonna do everything that merino wool does that we've already discussed. So it's going to wick moisture away from the body to keep you dry and to allow you to sweat and, and keep cool. And it's going to store heat in the air pockets, in the fibers, and it's going to insulate well. So this will still keep you cool and keep you warm. But this set of layers, the light wool layer, has an extra ingredient and it's Outlast. Now, Outlast is really clever stuff. It was designed originally for the NASA space program. It is too complicated for me to go into in too great a detail today because in truth, I've got a headache trying to remember all of those facts from merino wool. But in essence, the way Outlast works is it stores heat in paraffin molecules within the fiber. Now, what that means is when it is hot, that it draws heat away from the body and transfers it into the membrane. When it is cold, 
it takes the heat that is stored in the membrane and plays it back. So it's just going to make the underwear work a little bit more effectively. It's going to keep you warmer than you might expect and it's going to cool you down more than you might expect. It's fantastically priced. The top is £64, the bottom is £59. So if you are looking for a simple solution, if you want one set of underwear that's going to do everything, you've got to go light wool. And if you've never used base layers at all, it's a great place to start. It's going to make a huge amount of difference to your riding comfort, having a set of these over the kind of cotton stuff that you might have been wearing. So I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial on layering, on base layers and mid layers, and why they are so important if you want to get the best out of your technical outerwear. Now, if you want to see more layers, then visit the website motolegends.com. If you want to learn more about the Helvarsons base layers, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you to a dedicated section on the Helvarsons layers. Now, there you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail. You can check out on availability. And obviously, if you are so minded, you can buy some underwear there and then. Now, when you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on anything you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something from us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold claim. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, then I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you would like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the top of any of the pages on our website, there's a piece of script up there that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business, you'll receive email bulletins from us in future. If, however, you prefer to get information from us videographically, in other words, in this form, then we would be delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2020. This year, we're going to be giving away a motorcycle to a YouTube subscriber. We are terming it a Steve McQueen tribute bike. It's based on a Mutt 125cc machine. It's a lovely little cutie. You can read all about it on the front page of our website or on the home page of our YouTube channel. We will be giving it away sometime before Christmas. We'll be drawing it at some point in December later this year. Now, finally, I'd like to make a little play for our fabulous shop here at Motor Legends. We are based about a mile from the center of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. The shop itself is fairly small. It has a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of gear arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the quantity of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll sit down with you. We'll serve only the finest Italian Illy coffee. We'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.